Hey, what's up everybody? It's Paige Audrey Marie Hurd and you're tuned in to Star Studio. All right, everybody, welcome back to Star Studio. I'm Rashad Milligan. Today, we are joined by, you know, every now and again, you know, you have different generations and you have, you know, the productions and TV shows and movies that you remember people by, roles of when they were yay high. They could be older than you yourselves, but you'll still see them when they grow up and say, I remember when they was yay high on this and that. This is one of those actresses. This is one of those people when we think of this generation, we think of them in Black television and Black movies and Black theater and black art in general. We have Paige, Audrey Marie, heard in the building. Paige, how are you doing now? Hi, I'm good, how are you? You did great, you did great with the name. Thank you, I, hey man, look, <laughs> come on now. Uh, I'm doing amazing and it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to speak to you today. Um, I guess just, you know, just overall, like how, how are you feeling now? You know, you kind of had a Hawaii Five-0 and uh, Power and Book and, all these projects kind of coming on at the same time and finishing up and wrapping up with uh, Aaron uh, on air for everybody like that. Uh, just how has it been for you, 2023? 2023 is great. I'm just happy that everything is out and over and I don't have to lie anymore. I don't have to hold any secrets anymore. I'm just, I feel like I took a, I feel like I took my first big breath after the premiere of our season three. And I feel like I took an even bigger one after the finale. So I'm like, whew. <laughs> uh, how was it, I guess, dealing with the leaks? Like, and, and I know that's such a basic question and everything, but you know, to have everything leak and you guys still did so well with numbers and, you know, people participating on all social media, just, you know, what do you think that says about your viewership base, uh, the fans and everybody like that to kind of stay true and still support you guys? Um, you know, the leaks. Um, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand how these things leak out. Um, I'm on 50 side with that when he's like, you know, how do you guys just keep leaking your number one show, but okay. Um, but our fans are amazing. You know, they want to be kind of like mean, like uh, when I posted like we've seen it already. That was like all my comments, but a lot of people went back and rewatched it. So um, it's just a testament to how great the last two episodes were, especially, especially the finale. The finale was like super, super good. So I think a lot of people just wanted to kind of go back and rewatch it. And I love the internet because once it was out and people were tweeting about it, then people were lying saying that was fake. So then people were really going back to make sure that was actually really what was going on and it was real. Um, so our fans are pretty dope, you know, to still go back and watch it <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. And um, while, while I appreciate all of that, I have to acknowledge this early on. I was gonna kind of wait till later, but I have to acknowledge this. This is probably the second time, at least that, that I've, no, 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 third time. But the second time beforehand I saw it, and then I interviewed the person, where I interviewed someone who did the verse of the day on the Bible app. It was Lecrae. Lecrae was the first one last year. He did, uh, you know, the, the 116. And then mm -hmm. now it's you. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, for you, um, I guess just, you know, like, what role does faith play with you in uh, such an industry like the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to be a woman, a Black woman in the entertainment industry and still be, like, kind of so strong and publicly uh, displaying your faith? Um, I mean, it's huge to me. It keeps me grounded and humbled. And it also just reminds me that there's like a bigger purpose than what we are here doing. Um, you know, we can really get lost in our success and our fame. And a lot of times we feel like we can feel like this is all our doing. Um, and we don't realize how blessed and chosen we are as people to be in the position that we're in. And then for the hard times and the down times, because this industry is not always the prettiest, half the time it's not, or I would say probably more than half the time, 75% of the time it's ugly. Um, it just reminds me like who I am and what, what I stand in. Um, so it's a huge, huge deal for me. And I was so beyond excited and so honored to do the verse of the day. Like I was begging my team. I was like, please, please reach out to this company. Like I need to do this. And it's funny because I had done two 
And funny enough, um, they had like a little switch up mix up thing that happened. And it was like a very minor thing. I guess it ne never really happens. But me and Lecrae did the same verse of the day. And when his his went up, I thought it was going to be mine that day. So I woke up pumped and I'm like, oh, my God. And then I see him and I'm like, oh, my God, we did the same thing. And they, they it's him today. And I was like, I was devastated because then I had to wait another few months for my next one to come out. And so I was just like, you know, I was so sad, but I just think that's so funny that that's what you would bring up. <laughs> but I was excited and it was, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, no, no, that, that was like one of the first things I thought of. I was like, oh man, it's someone else who did the version. I don't know, that's like kind of a big deal to me. It's like the Bible yeah. app, I'd imagine is probably one of the more popular apps, if not the most popular app in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so yeah, that, that's pretty dope. Uh, I do want to ask kind of like, just how was everything, and you might get this question a lot, so I apologize, but how was it for you like life coming up as a famous person, right? So it's like, I don't know if you ever had what people will consider a normal life, you know what I'm saying? Because you've been famous for so long. Mm -hmm. how, like, how have you kind of navigated that and um, I guess like kind of dealt with fame your entire life? That's so funny. I don't consider myself famous at all. Um, but I do realize that I don't have, I guess, the most normal life, but a lot of it is normal. Um, I always just say like, I feel like I lived a Hannah Montana life because I did have a lot of normal moments. Um, I went to public school up until about ninth grade until I was homeschooled. And that was only because my teachers kept trying to fail me because I was away filming Everybody Hates Chris. Yeah, my drama teacher failed me. Like, girl, get a grip. I know, right? The craziest drama thing. Drama out of all the classes, drama? Drama and then PE. But I'm like, girl, I can't be here to run a mile. I'm working, but okay. Um, but I had those moments, you know, I, I, when I started homeschool, I would take the, the Metro bus to school. Like, and I was filming and on a huge show at that moment. So my, my mom kept me pretty humble. I'm one of five kids. Um, but then I had the other side where it's like I had the industry. But you know, you go to work and you're working all day and you're coming home and you're unloading the dishwasher and you're doing your chores and you're you're helping out with your brothers and sisters. So I feel like I have had a very balanced life. But yes, there are things that I feel like I didn't get to experience and that I missed out on. Um, so it's been it's been challenging. I think that through therapy, though, you work through those things and just kind of finding out like what what exactly did I miss? And there is there anything that I should probably like, you know, work through just so I can have a very healthy adult life. But with that comes like, you know, so much more backstory. But that's just a, a little, you know, surface answer for now. <laughs> oh, no, no, I definitely got you. I definitely got you. Uh... Like, so, so how was it when you were going to public school and you were filming Everybody Hates Chris? Like, when you were in class, were kids like, oh, I saw you on TV a lot. Like, did, did, you, did you deal with that? And like, how, okay, you're shaking your head, so. No, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't have like the most supportive, like I had one best friend. Um, and then like, I was cool with people, but people didn't really, they were like overly supportive to where it was like, oh my God, hey, and we're in school and we're like dapping each other up. Um, and I I try to stay out the way a lot. Like I dress down a lot. I dress like I was a little boy. I'll barely do my hair. I just wanted to be as normal and out the way as possible because growing up got bullied a tad, but not in the sense of where I was like sad about it. It was just like, you know, people were like, oh, you think you're cute cause you're on TV or oh, you think you're cute cause and I'm like, actually i don't and i don't even want to be seen so then i started going to school ugly and i was like i don't want to be seen like i want to just be here and do like the normal stuff so uh yeah that's kind of how high school and school was up until i left and then once i was in homeschool me and them kids got along great <laughs> so so Paige, you you had like i guess in what i'm hearing you kind of had like low self-esteem like you didn't think you were pretty as a kid? Um, no, I wouldn't call it low self-esteem because I wasn't walking around like sad about it. I just didn't want to, I guess it was one of those situations where in high school I dimmed my light so others could shine and I was okay with that. You know, I knew who I was and I was like, all right, but I didn't want, I didn't want people to feel any type of way. So I was like, you know what? 
you got it. Like my time will come one day, but no, definitely not like low self-esteem at all. Uh, how do you deal with that now as an adult? Cause you know, a lot of people always say, don't dim your light for others. You know, um, Deion Sanders has a quote that is like, uh, don't, don't let my confidence, you know, offend your insecurity or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So like, how, how do you kind of deal with that now as an adult? Um, I think I'm still trying to learn how to get out of it. It's just natural for me at this point. I've done it my whole life. And I do find myself doing it a lot because I know I have a very uh, strong energy or a, a presence about me. Um, sometimes I can't help it. Sometimes I just am who I am. But for the most part, I just kind of like to observe and just kind of be in the corner until it's my time. But, you know, once I'm comfortable and I, I really trust who and the environment I'm around, like I definitely feel like I can be my full, complete self. 100% understandable. I do want to ask you how, how have you just been doing in general the past two years? You know, um, you know, the, the, we, I guess us as black, black follower people in black Hollywood, like we kind of all saw, you know, kind of what, what you've been dealing with the last two years. So I just want to ask you how you're doing and, and how you're dealing with that. Thank you. That is very, very nice of you. And I don't think anybody has asked me that in an interview so far. Um, I am okay. Like I'm just getting through it. I'm working through it. I am, I think now starting to realize I, um, I have been grieving, but I don't know if I have been grieving, if that makes sense. Um, so kind of just like, figuring it out. Um, I do, I have decided like, you know, I, I've been kind of quiet about things and that's just naturally who I am. But then when I do speak about them, um, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily received the best. So I just, I'm like, you know, I, I kind of want to keep these moments and memories and pictures and stuff to myself. But you know, there's times here and there where I just want to like say something or post something, but I just, just stop myself. But, um, yeah, just kind of getting through it and, and trying to learn like what should it look like. I know grieving looks different for everybody, but I want to make sure that I'm actually doing it so it doesn't randomly pop up one day and I have no idea what it is. So I am like working through that too. Well, we want to continue to pray for you. Um, you. But, you know, everything like that. Thank you for sharing that and opening it up. She didn't know I was going to ask that question, y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. So 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 don't, don't cuss me out. Um, <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you, you know, like how you feel about Twitter and social media um, now, because like, like you said, like you can post something with an intention of one thing, but you know, you can't give a uh, tone over the internet, over a keyboard. So people are like, oh, you don't need to read the room, man. You don't need to cancel. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you like kind of deal with that as someone with the platform of millions of followers on Instagram and then hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter? Um. You know, Twitter's gotten to a point for me where like every time I tweet something, I realize why I'm not on there. I like reading and laughing, but my gosh, I've never been so irked in my, and I'm like, why do we, you know, I'll say the smallest thing. Like the other night, I was just like, um, it's the last time I'm gonna root for Boston. You know, I, I had faith in you guys and they're not my team, but I was rooting for them because like, to come back the way they did is amazing and I had money on it and it's my first time betting like so people don't know the context between what I'm saying but then it's just like this is too much or people like you know they're just and then a lot of times people think they're being clever but I'm seeing the same thing and I'm just like you guys are so aggy um Instagram is more like I just post my picture and I, I just leave it alone I don't even like go through it anymore like I used to I find my happiness in TikTok. I can't believe I'm saying that because I thought I'd never be on there, but it is such a good app. When did you make the switch to TikTok of like TikTok is my home, TikTok is my app? Um I feel like I've been because I only watch, like I don't have a a page that's up that like I'm posting content on. It's just strictly like being a creep and watching. Um I think I've been on there for like a year. And it really is my like, if I'm sad, if I'm down, if I'm like anxious, I really go there because my algorithm is all like cooking, um, happy relationships, special needs, um, games, Olympics, dances, 
uh, it's, it's just all really fun stuff for me. So it's really nice. And a lot of, of course, like Christian content as well. So I just be in there learning how to cook, learning how to be a good, you know, a good wife one day and just keeping up with my, my, my friends. <laughs> Speaking of Proverbs 31, like, how, you know, what are some things that, that you know, you kind of look at, you know what I'm saying, of like, okay, all right, you know what I'm saying, I need to kind of tweak this, you know, because I think a lot of times, like in life, like our younger years, teenage, maybe early 20s and stuff like that, we might be looking at all of our partners like, dang, this, you know, I wish this partner would have did this, did this, and then you get older and then you're like, hmm, man, maybe I could be more you know more sure of myself maybe i could uh, help around the house you know things like that what, what are some of the things that you've kind of been picking on and uh well i guess working on is a better word working on uh to to become uh, a better wife one day um i mean i think just working through whatever traumas you do have um when you're in really bad relationships like in your 20s most times you're in these horrible horrible relationships and it's like funny because i'm learning now i'm like wow you know the longer you stay in that the longer your process is to like get out of it and when you're single you can be healing and you're great because you're by yourself and you're like okay well yeah but then you you pick and choose when you're dealing with people but when you're in a relationship then you realize oh i have a lot to unlearn um a lot to get used to and um, just kind of learning those healthy habits. So for me, it's just like always holding myself accountable, uh, staying in therapy. And I think that's why I do go to therapy so much because I'm not really in there to uh, get her to agree with me. But most times she's like, Paige, relax, because I'm like, okay, but what did I do? Like, tell me what I did so I can go ahead and fix that because why did this person react like this? Um, so I'm honestly just trying to do it all. I, I want to be, I'm never going to be perfect, but I just want to be uh, kind. I want to be loving and I just want to be understanding to people the way I would want them to be the same way towards me. Take uh, dishing out what you get back or putting out the energy that you want to get back. Uh, I want to ask you about your your routine. You know, like what what is your beauty routine? Um, you know, how many hours of sleep do you get? It is like kind of, I guess, the main thing I want to know, like as that entire equation. I'm nervous to talk about uh, my sleeping. <laughs> um, I am not ashamed to say I am a 10 to 13 hour sleep. You lying? You lying? 10 to 13 hours? Yeah. Right. What you be doing? Taking ibuprofen? I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just be tired. <laughs> um. Right, yeah, because I could sleep from, yeah, that's about 12, yeah. Yeah, it's mostly like, I'd say 10, 11, or 12, sometimes 13, if I can get there, but. So, so do you ever, uh, I'm sorry, Paige, for cutting you off. Do you, are you ever texting or talking to someone, right? And they're interested in you, and, and there might be in the early stages, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you guys are talking and whatnot, and then you fall asleep. And then this person is like, oh, man. She don't like me at all. And then like at 1 a.m. they're like, well, it's nice knowing you. It's like, have a good life. And then you wake up like at 12 p.m. the next day and you're like, whoo, just woke up. And they're like, yeah, right. Like, have you ever like, kind of dealt with that? Um, I've never like fallen as well. I don't I can't say never, but I don't really fall asleep on people. I'm just like, peace out. I'm out like going to bed. But everybody in my life, like anybody who's close to me knows like I'm a grandma is what they call me. And it's like she's i need to like today i had to wake up at like eight so i needed to get to bed like as soon as possible i was like oh my gosh because i do not like mornings i can't take it um but for the most part everybody knows like my friends it's so funny if i was to text everybody this morning at eight o'clock the first thing they go is like are you okay wow you're up early like it's always something to the point where i have to tell them okay guys it's getting old like i am an adult i can wake up early sometimes you know um and then as far as a beauty routine, I do not have one. I don't wear makeup that much. So most times it's like I am just throwing my hair up in a bun and I'm kind of going or maybe I'll pop a lash on here and there. Um, I just kind of learn how to do my makeup. So there are times where I do do it, but 
I you know I just like to get facials, make sure my skin is clear because I don't wear the makeup, and that's really it. Um, yeah. I heard it. I heard it. Uh, in the month of June coming up, we have Father's Day, and we also have Juneteenth coming up. So, in the spirit of both of that, how can in 2023 Black men help better support and listen to uh, Black women? Oh gosh, I don't. I don't even know if I'm ready to touch this. <laughs> We're gonna be here for ten hours. No. Um, you know, I will just say this, Black men, I love you, but we definitely need to do better. Uh, Not the but. Yeah, the but. Um, black men should just do better as a whole. I think let's start with this. Let's get more Black men into therapy. Let's just start there. I'm not going to attack the Black man. <laughs> I salute that. I salute that. But, but, <laughs> and not just get in therapy, Black men. I need you guys in therapy, like how I'm in therapy. Like I have a every Thursday at 4 p.m., not, oh, I see my therapist every few months. No, you need to go at least twice a month if it's every other week or weekly, um, just to start. And then when you feel like, you know, I can, I can dial it back, then have them like on speed dial to call or something. But, yeah, let's let's get them in therapy. Well, what are some of the traumas that you feel like the black community has faced that you realize kind of through your own uh, therapy experience? Um, I mean, I just feel like so, 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 so much. I feel like the black community is just. It's one of those things where it's like I don't turn a blind eye to any of it, but it's sometimes can be so depressing to think about like sometimes I sit here and I'm just like, I really can't believe like this is a thing like black, white, uh, or like just not being able to get the same opportunities or be paid or, or, or just to be discriminated in general, or like, it, it just blows my mind. Um, and I just think that a lot of times it's so unfair that you don't want to go down that rabbit hole of thinking like, all of this is unfair because it is. And I really do feel for um, my black community. Uh, I personally think that we should all get together and take whoever supports us and go start our own like country or even if we all go move to some state together, you know what I mean? And then just see like the people who are treating us like this, let's just see what they can do without us for a second, you know what I mean? Like, let, let's just see what happens. And then I bet you that'll change a lot, but yeah. We, we only have a couple minutes here. So I wanna ask you a follow-up to that. What are some black businesses that you're supporting right now that you kinda wanna give a shout out to? Ooh, that's a great question, black businesses. Well, the lady who does my hair, she's black and she has her own business. Shout out to Angie, I love her. Um, I, I feel like I know so many, but every time I'm asked this, which has only been like twice, I just like freeze. Cause I'm like, is amazing. Manly hands is a black owned business that is incredible. They give the best massages. Um, if you ever need them for your events, parties, or anything, they are awesome. It's super professional and super, super kind. I'm pretty sure I'm going to think of like 10 after we get off here. I'm going to be mad at myself. Oh, no, 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 no. I feel it. I, I definitely understand. Right now, I got on the FUBUs right now on my feet. This Clyde Lordez, Clyde sent this in. He, I interviewed him earlier. Okay, so you know who like my favorite of all favorites is uh, Barriers New York. That's my favorite. Black owns like hoodies of course fear of god I, I love them too and i just got a package but like barriers i'm wearing a barriers hoodie to my next interview actually so it's already picked out and on my bed and i'm about to throw that on as i head out but um you know shout out to shout out to that company because i love them they're incredible i want them to just hire me to be the the face of the company barriers <laughs> yeah barriers call your, call your girl <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Uh, so, you know, getting out of here, you know, just last chance to promote everything you got going, which is a gazillion things right now, uh, mm -hmm. where people can stream, uh, rewatch the seasons, anything mm -hmm. you got coming up, 
And uh, where can people can find you on social media as well? Okay, so my Instagram is Thuggin. <laughs> and um, not to be confused with Young Thug, it's just Thuggin. A lot of people accidentally tag me when they're uh, talking about him. I'm like, ah, yikes. One time Warren G told me happy birthday because he thought it was Young Thug. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, <laughs> I love that. Um, so that's where you can find me. You guys can download the Stars app and rewatch all the episodes of Power Book 2 Ghost. I have a film that should be coming out shortly with Megan Good and Terrence J. I am, you know, just working on figuring out how I would like to um, start up whatever mental health awareness, you know, whether that's nonprofit or a company, like how I'm going to get in that space and really do something big. And also just really working a lot in the special needs community. So trying to work with best buddies more. Um, get a part of the Tim Tebow Foundation, uh, Special Olympics. So, yep. So, you know, those are the things that I'm working on and always just doing the self work and getting ready so I can stay ready. So when the next opportunity comes and it's big, I'm, I'm just ready to go and I don't got to do too much. Man, you already know. Uh, you already know the resume. You already seen the work. What are we talking about? Two decades? <laughs> Two decades. And, and we still, we still years away from 40 and we still over two decades of working, you, you, you know what you're getting. You know? <laughs> so uh, Paige, best of luck. We thank you so much for stopping by Star Studio today. Um, black businesses, make sure you support them. Uh, yeah. Therapy for black men. Uh, you could probably just Google that. Therapy, better therapy, black men, Atlanta, Georgia, wherever you are in the world. And until next time, you all please take care of yourselves.